Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hi, this is Amit Doshi, and I wanted to thank each and every one of our listeners. It's been two years since I founded IBM, and it's been an amazing two years. We wanted to learn a little bit more about who is listening to our shows, and so we put together a short survey. The survey is anonymous, and we aren't going to be collecting any personal information. I would really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes out of your day and go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and fill it out. Thanks, and please keep listening. Hello and welcome to Simplified. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Your fortnightly podcast on trying to make you smarter than you already are. <laughs> <laughs> or the other way around, in which case we apologize. Yeah. Uh, we will start with no, we, we have, this is almost an unscripted episode. So uh, this is going to be more random than usual. We will start with Naren's Goa trip. Naren, tell us about your Yeah, Goa so trip. we had an impromptu trip to Goa, the missus and I. She was feeling very low and she wanted to go somewhere like Paris or London. And <laughs> my <laughs> current finances afforded a trip to Goa. It's, it's like Channel V had this ad where they had this segment called Brought to You By, with, where an actual buy was there. Yes. And, that, and at the end of the entire ad segment, she was like, Itna paisa mein itna ich milega. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly my predicament. Your trip. Your trip. Yeah, so Goa was awesome. And uh, I, as you know, as the whole world knows, I'm an uh, abstainer. I don't drink now. What? <laughs> no and, wonder uh, Malia had to flee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all. <laughs> Narin is personally responsible for their headquarters. <laughs> this, is, this is when you realize how much the world considers you a drunken sort. Because when you tell people you have stopped drinking, everyone like, what? 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 Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, so clear we, skies in Goa, lovely beaches, and lots of heavenly astral bodies. Yeah, uh, no, no, I have, I have a worse segue for you actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, we are trying to desperately to, uh, uh, we are wondering how to segue into the uh, main topic, which you no doubt know because you downloaded the damn episode. <laughs> so when you went to Goa, there there wasn't any space in Goa actually, but because you come from the company where you come from, there was they allocated space for you. So it was Sri Hari. Kota. So, which is a place from where Narin works for Hari Industries. Okay. So, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. 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 clear skies, blue green, uh, blue grass, green. And a lot of space. Yeah. So, <laughs> between I, heads. I had my Nine years. years. Sri Hari Kota of open skies. Uh-huh. And uh, as I lay wandering on the beach, I couldn't see it, but a little somewhere else, a rocket was taking off, right? And uh, it was quite a remarkable takeoff. Uh, and I bet most of you like wouldn't know how awesome it is because everyone knows that the PSLV C-37 was launched on the 15th of February 2017 Yay. from Satish Dhawan Space Center at Srihari Kota. And it was carrying a payload, as everyone knows, of 104 satellites from six countries around the world, including Israel, the Netherlands, Switzerland, UAE, the United States, and last but not the least, Kazakhstan. <laughs> you know, that's greatest like a, country in the world. <laughs> country, uh, all the other countries are run by little girls. <laughs> exactly. This is like a quiz question. Like, what what could possibly connect these countries? Like, yeah. why would Netherlands, <laughs> Israel, and the UAE be in it's, the... It's totally brilliant. It no, it's actually... Brilliant. The only other connect is... Indians have found a way to open a store there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Kazakhstan? <laughs> Probably, dude. I won't rule it out. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Narit, I mean, uh, that launch thing. I actually, for once, uh, I think someone tweeted about it or something. It was uh, came up on my Twitter. So, I actually was home at that time. And by some, this thing, my parents were also here. So, we switched it on and we are watching. And uh, there is this one kindly uncle doing the countdown and uh, where, where the entire thing is before launch. And I was feeling like this pride and I was thinking Indian space exploration, what a legacy we have, where we are as humans. <laughs> and my mother is sitting over there, all Tamilians only. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So, I mean, it was it was that they are all Tamilians and Malayali uncles sitting over there. <laughs> Madhavan Nair for the win. Nare, carry on. So I was, uh, you know, I I really realized the awesomeness of the thing because I had no clue how big a rocket was. Right? Do you have any idea how big the PSLV rocket is? 
like uh, uh, is it uh, as big as your building a uh, building uh, it's as big as a 14 story building okay wow. it's oh. really humongous it's really big yeah. and so like, then we have hopes us, that one day antilla will just take off and go away yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, as as Shakespeare uh, said, no, it, it's a consummation devoutly to be wished. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they, these guys, they it's tremendously uh, inspiring engineering achievement because we are all products of the same education system, and most of us have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> taking the first derivative of anything and these guys well, I am I'm, I'm surprised you went for that I would have been happy if we were able to get the seven tables up to six <laughs> really I mean uh, so one of the things that fascinates me it's it's completely beside the point and I'm not going to talk about this much is what it is about some institutions that inspires its uh, you know the the people belonging to it to give off their best because isro is a government institution it has the same pay scales as any other government institution and it has the same bureaucracy the same reward system mm. and there are doubtless hundreds of really really smart guys who never get written about never get acknowledged in public and yet they go every morning and give off their best so the engineering itself because that that really fascinates me yeah is the rocket right mm. so in principle is the same as a diwali rocket so mm. basically you know how we do we light a diwali rocket and run away as fast <laughs> as possible <laughs> because there's no saying where it goes so once i i remember once with the diwali rocket took off and then it just went parallel to the ground and hit somebody in the stomach so i have no, seen so i have a mm. rocket story where uh, i mean it's not really a story as quite horrifying where rocket actually same thing fell down came hit my shoe and went up my pants Oh wow! Yeah, wow. as a kid, <laughs> then it, thankfully I was wearing jeans and it then kind of burned out. You must there. have seen the bigger rocket and like quite a dance. So on on, yeah. <laughs> on on that note, uh, mm. in Malayalam, uh, joking off is in slang is called vana madi. Vana actually means rocket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the slang, so the literal slang for masturbation in uh, Kerala is to let loose a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> What a so, payload! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Moving right along, the yeah. you were saying. Yeah. So, as you know, Diwali rockets are very cute when they go horizontal and diagonal and things mm-hmm. like that. But a PSLV containing 104 satellites belonging to other people mm-hmm. can't do that, right? So, mm-hmm. it is really sophisticated, and it's in the realm of something called control engineering. So, mm-hmm. apart from the main thrust. rocket so it is the same it's some big gas container full of fuel which is burnt and all the gases come out and newton's third law so action and reaction so the rocket goes in the opposite what's direction. the fuel that they use is it the same thing like we use mm. for cars so, or yeah so it is uh, it has four stages stage 1 is a solid propellant oh okay stage 2 is liquid stage 3 again is solid stage 4 is liquid again stage 1 is about 12 feet in diameter 3 2.8 meters and it contains 138 tons of something known as hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene urethane bound propellant not something you get at your local kirana store yeah <laughs> you can't buy it thoda sa check as a thoda sa hydroxyl terminated check as a resident chemical engineer can yeah. you please explain what this material is <laughs> yeah so uh, it has hydroxy which <laughs> Uh, which fell ill, which is why it's called hydroxyl. I know, terminated. Yeah, yeah. There were many buta buta dienes, which is why poly buta dien. Yeah. And uh, urethane. Okay, that goes back to rocket and the, <laughs> the, the your story. <laughs> and yeah, p- so, uh, yeah, and insects take off, which is why it's called a propellant. Yeah. So, Something so, we're all very familiar with. <laughs> okay, despite uh, Chuck uh, giving such a good impression of someone who doesn't know himself, just before the <laughs> talk, he was telling me that. Uh, Uh, HTPB is called yeah, among chemical engineers uh, is an oligomer of butadiene terminated at each end with a hydroxyl functional group and uh, it reacts with the isocyanates to form polyurethane uh, polymers and its use as solid rocket propellant is because it binds the oxidizing agent and other ingredients into a solid burst so like simply tumor. speaking jaldi jalta hai jaldi jalta hai but you kitna deta hai is 138 ton gives you 58 seconds of joy okay that's <laughs> 
<laughs> after not 58 i i'm sorry i'm 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 so sorry it's 105 so seconds after 105 seconds he's like baby i'm all spent no, yeah. so basically this this hmm. this uh, propellant is is like the nerds version of that uh, 5 5000 ka lar that you set off exactly. in diwali right absolutely like, exactly you buy it for so much you like say it spend so much time laying it out and then it's done in like 100 seconds or yeah. something and we have to get over the term seconds of joy <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> and uh, yeah so stage 1 also has six booster rockets which are gimbaled <laughs> and so the gimbaled means it sort of you know it, it has like six feet and it can sort of rock itself the whole thing uh, sort of yeah it's like six wise men in a circle farting <laughs> you know in order to keep the ship in yeah so it's, it's very dramatic <laughs> and uh, yeah so then you know that, that's how they so that's the really sophisticated part of the whole thing is how they keep the uh, thing a, on on its trajectory it's wonderful that you use the words farting and sophisticated <laughs> when they're <laughs> close of each other wise men farting <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the stage after that that stage 2 is something called a vikas engine which is indigenously developed and it uses a liquid propellant called it, it uh, this also is a gimbaling one right so it's like gimbal which which sounds like it loves to play poker with <laughs> other uh, vikas engine it actually sounds all. like a lotr character but yeah, it <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's actually a system which allows articulation as i was saying you know sort of 6 feet and just and it's very sophisticated so it carries 41 tons it's much smaller than the earlier one of of hypergolic material called udmh hypergolic means something which sort of spontaneously combines with something else and becomes a lot of energy mm-hmm. and oh. uh, udmh is unsym- as chuck was telling me before the <laughs> program is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and uh, nitrogen tetroxide so this one is a real stud it lasts for 158 seconds yeah wow. Ah, uh, like yeah. And the spontaneous combination thing, like it's almost like when every once every four or five years, uh, BJP and Shiv Sena combine to form a big outfit. Yeah, yeah. yeah like that. that is that is definitely hyperbolic. <laughs> yeah, hyperbolic. What is hyperbolic? And hyper mean? and hyperbolic. <laughs> hyperbolic and hyperbolic. Right. Yeah. So stage three is another rocket propelled one using the same HTPB fuel, but this time it's a mere seven ton because. Oh, some 175 tons is already gone because oh, oh, the spent. rocket went on keto Rock, diet basically yeah keto diet basically full time keto diet now it's a slim sort of you know six pack uh, rocket <laughs> even though it's leaner and uh, you know it has really good ripped six packs and everything it's still able to last just 83 seconds so there's a little lesson for it and all Uh, in all this for people who are crazy about uh, <laughs> it's like it's yeah. like it's like the lokhandwala dude who's done steroids and stuff but he's like yeah. baby sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the final stage that is stage 4 is another liquid propellant stage and this time it is it's also fueled by a hypergolic propellant system but this time it is monomethyl hydrazine oh very okay. crafty yeah. right crafty, and yeah. this mixed oxides of nitrogen not nitrogen oh it's like platter of <laughs> it's like <laughs> a <of> nitrogen <laughs> platter nitrogen platter <laughs> yeah some nitrogen some platter, no yeah. no to <laughs> <laughs> whether they serve it at barbecue nation <laughs> <laughs> so all this while the control system which is uh, a little saucy sounding uh, <laughs> comprises of strap on booster rockets okay and like all booster rockets strapped on and and the secondary in- injection thrust vector control systems which do this whole thing it that's what keeps the 44 meter rock long rocket which is roughly the height of a 14 story building as i was saying earlier which which really staggered me man it's huge and it it has to go at a very controlled path and all these satellites have to be let into orbit like within a few meters of their design altitude so it's very sophisticated in fact uh, when when the launch was happening i kind of got that uh, there was uh, the, the first first it was controlled i mean the telemetry was done from shri hari kota itself then i think there the deep sensing that thing in bangalore then there is one network in uh, there is one uh, deep sensing uh, center in mauritius hmm. which was tracking it and then finally the trajectory was going south hmm. turns at antarctica and like kind of uh, the i think it the trajectory went around the cape of good hope type of thing so there then the final sensing center is also there in antarctica so that's where they finally lost uh, signal or it was finally fully in space yeah so i think that that entire thing about 
the distance it covers along with the height that it goes at is also like it's incredible. It's incredible and for you know what I mean like they say it's not the meat it's the motion. Yeah. It's like 100 and you know 100 and whatever second yeah. look where it goes. I know. So yeah I mean uh, this this is all that I have for the wow what a awesome thing part. Who so four stages I hmm. think we should uh, Take a little break now. This is yeah. our first stage. Yeah. Uh, how much? One eighty seconds. You said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll be back in a lot, lot less. <laughs> See you soon. Hey Dilnas, have you tried sex toys? No, I've not tried sex toys, but I've tried sex. I said, why are you asking me this weird question? Who talks about sex like that? We do. Really. We do. We also talk about dating, condoms and orgasms. On our show X and Y, where we have a casual conversation about sex and relationships in India. X and Y is available every week on Stitcher, YouTube, the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app you prefer. So I guess we do talk about sex like that. And we're back and uh, we're talking about uh, the PSLV C37 launch that uh, ISRO has just uh, successfully conducted with 104 satellites put into space. And Naren, what was the reaction of the scientists uh, at our Sri Hari Kota Center yeah. right after this launch? As is very, very uh, sort of justified, there was a great deal of jubilation and chest thumping. And it was justified. So this was a big deal, at least to my uh, sort of novice uh, eyes. And years, this is awesome. So the ISRO chairman, uh, A.S. Kiran Kumar, congratulated his team for the successful launch of 104 satellites. And he said, my hearty congratulations to the team. The prime minister has conveyed his congratulations. Right? Of course. So that with the, which uh, is what all everyone was waiting for. And the, the, reason, <laughs> the, the reason he couldn't say exactly was basically, he, he, I don't think a Malayali accent and a Mitro goes very well. <laughs> 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 Mitro? <laughs> Mitro. So, uh, the director of the ISRO Satellite Center, Mail Sami Annadurai, he said we can also eat centuries like cricketers. In another two months, <laughs> the number of satellites built by ISRO will reach 100. That's because there were only three satellites uh, by ISRO in the whole payload. Everything else was Kazakhstan and USA. You know? <laughs> I know. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he must have like spent like yeah. 20 minutes in front of the mirror in the morning to rehearse that, no? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Aaj main yeah. cricketer joke marega. <laughs> So, the director of the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, uh, named K. Shivan, he said it was the toughest mission they had handled because they had to ensure that the 104 satellites didn't <laughs> sort of bump into yeah, each other. Yeah, actually, and, that was the biggest thing. So, I mean, for, first was that the 79 uh, satellites that were launched, they were called doves. So, mm. they were these tiny uh, satellites that were like under 5 kilos. Mm. And they were all injected into very, very slightly different orbits. Mm. So... The whole thing was, and the the entire separation, in fact, I saw the separations live. Mm. It was literally like once the, so first the Cartosat and the main Indian Indian satellites, they were separated. And then and they were the really big ones. They were right? the really big ones. They were mm. like the weather sensing and all that Indian satellites. So those two happened first and there was then a minute. And then within, I think, 15 or 20 seconds, they separated a hundred and uh, about the other remaining 95, 97 satellites. And they just literally like injected them all in separate orbits. So that was actually the biggest feat that they did because the biggest problem they had was like, and in fact, one other thing that I had read about this was to get the space right, they had actually inserted, so they have normally the, the telemetry sections and all that stuff as well, along with the, so there's the payload section and then there's the telemetry section. They were like, ha, thoda extra space in a telemetry section. <laughs> let me cram a few more satellites in there. It was a proper local train Bomb job. job. <laughs> they were like, thoda adjust, le, thoda side me agar ke adjust kar lo na. They have fixed satellites everywhere they could. <laughs> Incredible. And actually, so on that basis, uh, we, uh, th there, were, there were actually a few criticisms also of the launch where, mm. I mean, uh, the our, our um, very famous uh, Malayali former ISRO chairman, mm. he said it was pretty unremarkable that uh, if you, I mean, it was it was it was a big feat, it was a record, but it's unremarkable because once you know that you are going to get satellites of th uh, what three or four kilos, it's not a big deal to launch a uh, hundred. You can even do three or four hundred. So it's actually not that much, and there, it was fairly valid. It wasn't just. Because, I mean, I, I was initially when I read this, I was like, ah, four more ISRO chief. Nah, mere time mein tha, tum so sab kam, kam hi ho. 
types uh, comment but uh, another fair comment that he made was what it does is create a lot of space debris okay so these satellites when they are 3 or 4 uh, they, they kilograms heavy they run for maximum 2 or 3 years and then they die and what happens to stuff when it dies in space and this was something interesting that i started reading when i was uh, reading about this was space debris now they become when these satellites die they just keep orbiting earth endlessly and they become like a hazard for future like say for example if you put a manned satellite up there or even a, any kind of satellite these things can come and crash into it and like destroy them now space debris is usually dead satellite spacecrafts mm. and boosters but there are also some pretty wacky things orbiting earth okay mm. at uh, in the name of space debris there are paint flakes like wow. literally of chipped off satellites mm-hmm. paint flakes that are oh. actually orbiting earth they have all coalesced together and they just keep orbiting the earth now mm. a glove lost by astronaut ed white on the first american spacewalk they are actually tracking oh. these things <laughs> they are actually still orbiting the earth a camera lost by astronaut michael collins near gemini 10 a thermal blanket lost during sts 88 garbage bags jet- jettisoned by soviet cosmonauts during mir's 15 year life a wrench a toothbrush <laughs> sunita williams of the sts lost a camera during an eva all of these things are currently orbiting earth right now so at the next time you're feeling too proud of your achievements in life remember that a soviet garbage bags and a toothbrush have been orbiting <laughs> earth way before you will ever have the chance to do so <laughs> that's a truly humbling thought yeah. you can tell so, it to anyone who's sort of you know uh, too much swag i know like the toothbrush orbiting earth okay what are <laughs> you doing <Tune again. laughs> <laughs> so finally uh, douglas adams has an answer to where all those ballpoint pens yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they are orbiting the earth they are orbiting the earth and in fact new york times as a uh, lot of us know, know when the mangalyaan launch oh, yes, happened yes. they did that uh, famous, that that, that cartoon infamous, that, that, that infamous cartoon, cartoon. Hmm. so people panned them a lot around that time but they don't seem to i mean they don't seem to have really gotten on track since that there they, uh, and this is something i really read and i think we should put the link also for everyone's reading consumption in the description <laughs> is that they wrote a truly petulant article okay about just about groaning about how unremarkable the thing is now madhavan nayar gave some really va- valid points about why it was unremarkable here are some of the reasons why new york times thought it was not a uh, a uh, uh, great uh, this thing uh, launch and i quote i read exactly from the article The Indian Space Research Organisation has gained attention in recent years for staging successful missions at a very low cost in part because its scientists are paid less. <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> I was like that is some some rare petulance. And and the other one is and India is fascinated with world records and Wednesday satellite launch prompted a wave of celebratory crowing some Asian that it is at its Asian rivals. I was like, bro, <laughs> तेरे को लॉन्च कर रहे तो तू करना I mean the financial no, time when we was uh, like when we were kids we used to go play cricket match when you get uh, when you lose to a team yeah. you go and uh, tell everyone that they are all over age guys <laughs> <laughs> that's why we lost so this is basically that and otherwise if you can and if, if say for example if the us actually had some control over like indian if they had any control if india was actually not making these things indigenously they would have taken the other indian playground approach mera bat hai main ghar ja raha hu thank the financial times also uh, did its own version of butt hurt mm-hmm. where they actually talked about uh, for, one was they they quoted so the, these guys quoted a whole bunch of people one saying that okay carto said is there for betterment of agriculture which mm-hmm. is requirement for india so that's a that's a good thing in that way but india should focus more on military functions and military advancement and then they co- put another quote saying that india is such a backward country why do they need to do all of these things <laughs> like <laughs> this is truly i mean this, this is something that is quite amazing actually that mars thing really hurt them it was yeah. really yeah really i know the mars the mars orbiter mission yeah, being that, the way it was i yeah. mean that was that was there in fact some of the one one very poignant image if you look up uh, on uh, the internet of the indian space program in its infancy is a very adv- a very futuristic looking satellite sitting on top of a bullock cart Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is the Apple sensing satellite, and everyone was like, "Oh, they don't have money to transport the satellite, so that is why they're putting it on a bullock cart." And a whole bunch of articles came out there. The real reason, and this was quite amazing, was that the satellite was placed on top of the this thing because they were like the the uh, chairman at the time made a comment. He uh, gave a quote where he said that 
uh, everyone's talking there's a lot of uh, hullabaloo about this we have air conditioned trucks to transport <laughs> this stuff but the reason we put it on the bullock cart was all the metal inside the air conditioned tr- uh, trucks was ruining our sensing tests so they were like they needed to transport they needed to yeah. get it out yeah. in a in non metallic in a non metallic thing and someone came up with the idea of why don't we put it on a bullock cart because it's wood and ox <laughs> and it's right here <laughs> and it's right here so let's put it out there and take it out and i think that was actually ingenious yeah. Very and ingenious. that is that is the fundamental actually yeah. why india's space program is doing so well compared to the us one where India is able to launch stuff for under 100 million which the US is taking billions to do. Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, the US butthurt is actually you can uh you can explain it because if you th- think about it, the rocket our rocket uh, carried stuff from uh, a lot of stuff from other countries. So we have finally shown the US that we are better than them at throwing out things coming from other nations quicker <laughs> than they are. And Well and played. I mean and this is all from a space program that started in 1969 which yeah. is a poignant year yeah. because that was the year Armstrong stepped on the moon the, the, when Armstrong stepped on the moon we started our space program and that's uh, I mean made some remarkable strides and all of this uh, launched our first satellite in 1975 uh, the first person on the moon uh, means uh, the first person in space uh, India's first person in space Yeah. also all of this before liberalization before our economy actually took off and in fact first indian in space was launched by the soviets only and his name was rakesh sharma the most the man with the most generic indian name to make sure there is no <laughs> doubt about his nationality okay he went in space and told indira gandhi that india looked sare jahan se acha from space a line i'm sure is more rehearsed than most of our podcasts <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he was a guy who took that photo of uh, india like yeah. during diwali <laughs> during diwali <laughs> that picture and then afterwards i mean since since there uh, india has had like a whole bunch of we developed our first indigenous space vehicle which was slv3 in 1980 and since then we have had gslv which is geostationary uh, satellite uh, vehicles i mean geostationary satellite vehicles are also quite important because uh, just uh, the the entire thing about geostate so when you are orbiting the earth you basically i mean if you are orbiting the earth you go all around the earth so that's mm. like a regular uh, satellite but a geostationary satellite actually matches the orbital speed of the earth So it's always pointed at a particular point yeah. on the Earth at any point. So in relatively, time. it's. So it's I relatively remember from my twelfth standard physics that it has to be at thirty six thousand kilometers. Yeah, it has a reason a, for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that yeah. it also matches. There's yeah. There's there's some important sounding words <laughs> called apogee and perigee in there, yeah. which I don't know, and I'm not going to get into. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, The point is that G- so we have a launch vehicle for geostationary satellites, which is GSLV, and for uh, regular satellites, which is PSLV. And PSLV is actually, uh, in fact, uh, with this current launch, uh, half of the launch cost was recovered just by the other satellites that were going on it. So we just literally got fifty percent off even on our launches. <laughs> PSLV sounds like a legit name for the next Tamil Nadu CM. <laughs> <laughs> and. And uh, I mean, hey, one thing I I was I just remembered when you were saying that uh, bit about indigenous, right? Mm-hmm. So when uh, Americans and uh, Russians were in a race to send the first uh, uh, object into space, the Russians beat the Americans. They send a Sputnik, mm-hmm. and uh, so Americans were like, you know, they they rushed their thing and they said, no, no, we have to. So within a month. They sent their own version, which basically went some 300 meters and landed into the sea. <laughs> so the, they promptly called it the Kaputnik. Kaputnik. <laughs> <laughs> and so when uh, somebody asked uh, the the guy about why why the Soviets beat the Americans in in the in launching the satellite. He said, "Their German Jewish engineers are better than our German Jewish engineers." Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking of uh, German Jewish in- engineers, uh, so our next segment is somewhat about where this entire idea of space exploration started. Okay, hmm. and why is it important in the first place? So now, the very sage uh, astrophysicist oh. Carl Sagan, he actually said this that. Since in the long run every planetary civilization will be endangered by impacts from space every surviving civilization is obliged to become seafaring not because of exploratory or romantic zeal but for the most practical reason imaginable staying alive if our long term survival is at stake we have a responsibility to our species to venture to other worlds then in in slightly lighter vein the novelist warren ellis said the single simplest reason why human space flight is ne- space flight is necessary is this stated as plainly as possible Keeping all your breeding pairs in one place is a retarded one way to run a species. 
<laughs> it was literally keeping all your eggs in one basket and the best ex- <laughs> and the best explanation of all came from the legendary george carlin astrophysicist <laughs> who said why does a dog lick its balls because it can <laughs> <laughs> and so So till about 1944 this entire business of hurling man made objects at the sky was mostly to make them fall on fellows you didn't like very much yeah <laughs> from catapults to trebuchets to cannons to finally uh, which which finally took a serious turn when when one of the german fellows uh, von braun uh, made a v2 rocket the first object to breach the boundary of space they used this to bomb the crap out of the uh, out of britain and finally enough the v2 rocket rockets were were incredible so like it it just made them feel happy but the problem was each v2 rocket so to la- to make the fuel for one v2 rocket it took 30 tons of potatoes to get the fuel of one v2 rocket at a time when there was famine in germany so it was it was so expensive to launch you, the enormous human cost yeah, yeah enormous human cost and it was and the v2 rockets were all put together with uh, concentration camp labor yeah so i mean the, it was it it was more a psychological weapon than a literal one because it more people died in the making of the rockets than the people who actually were killed by the v2 rockets but uh, after the war uh, people were like okay let's use this for uh, stuff other than blowing people up the americans and the soviets both had a race to hoover up as many german german jewish engineers <laughs> as they could to make their own badass rockets the russians won the initial battle the, the space war followed with uh, the launch of the first satellite in space the sputnik 1 the first living thing in orbit laika and the first man made object on another celestial body luna 2 and of course the first man and woman in space yuri gagarin and valentina tereshkova Uh, at this point i feel all my school quizzing gods are yeah, beaming yeah. down at me with great <laughs> <Yeah>. pride <laughs> and uh, as you read your script from a computer yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> but then the americans took over by adding humans into the mix with apollo mm. 8 being the first manned uh, spacecraft to orbit the earth and then the big one when apollo 11 put neil armstrong on the surface of the moon to utter those immortal words good uh, luck mr gorsky <laughs> good luck mr gorsky <laughs> 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 yeah. Which, by the way, is a hoax. That good luck, Mr. Gorsky. Uh, Gorsky is a hoax, which was possibly originated from the stand-up routine of the comedian Buddy Hackett. Hmm. But why let the truth get in the way of a good story? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> And uh, the only next thing to do is for the first alien to be shot from. Uh, Earth to space, which will happen uh, if SpaceX is successful and Elon Musk takes off. Yeah. And uh, this was 1969. uh after reaching the moon uh, uh back then you would think that we would have touched pluto by now before it got re recognized as a planet right <laughs> but uh, not really after the space race cooled the focus sh- uh, shifted to looking at space in a more utilitarian way okay they were like communications weather navigation military satellites it's almost like an app or a website that which launched with some awesome functionality but once it became successful they monetized and now you can't get past the home page without 20 advertisers trying to sell you soap <laughs> or shoelaces <laughs> without while mining your data to spam you later and uh, so i mean these guys and then post which came the entire uh, exploring other planets thing where uh, there were there was a probe sent to venus and phobos and uh, phobos is one of the moons of saturn which is it's probably it's suspected to be habitable and literally today which is the day of recording which is the 23rd of feb uh, we have the news that uh, there are seven new habitable planets uh, out there which are only about 37 light years away so yeah we should but be but you know what the like... interesting thing for me is they are uh, orbiting an ultra cool dwarf uh-huh. you know that yeah so they should all be called snow whites right because in uh, <laughs> other universe there are seven ultra cool dwarfs orbiting one snow white in so fact like, in fact there are a lot of storybook yeah. references when it comes to celestial stuff where they a uh, lot of scientists when they are looking for habitable planets they look for uh, what they call the goldilocks strip where they are like the certain distance from yeah, a star yeah. which is not too cold not too cold and not too hot <laughs> so they called it the gold call it the goldilocks uh, strip and uh, so yeah i mean now and then of course uh, we have uh, our our great uh, savior of human kind elon musk who is looking to uh, he he's actually uh, strongly afoot at uh, looking to colonize mars and uh, this colonization of mars stuff is also really interesting uh, where there is this um, so there are there are certain similarities with earth where uh, the the average uh, the day of mars is almost exactly the same as earth it is 24 hours and 37 minutes oh so uh, they call it one sol so mm. you add like 37 minutes every day and uh, 
it's got uh, it's got decent gravity you can actually walk there and uh, it's got uh, the there there the soil is quite uh, amenable to go on their meteorite strikes are quite low so it doesn't it's not that uh, difficult but the big problem there is of course uh, the, the atmosphere the atmosphere now yeah. the lack of atmosphere it uh, not just makes it so it may it not just makes it difficult for people to like traverse on that but it also makes it difficult for you to set up any kind of base over there so there is some there is a process so there are two ways of getting around it uh, if you are looking to colonize mars one is you start digging tunnels so you build everything underground live subterranean live yeah. subterranean which is actually quite amenable in mars so you'll have to dig lo- big and tunnels and elon musk has started doing that yeah you anyway. know he's digging uh, boring ink <laughs> <laughs> so i mean that that is already underway and the other way is that you kind of uh, do this process called terraforming which is you literally transform the surface of the of mars and pump an atmosphere there wow so you wow. actually pump an entire atmosphere out there you create so you actually generate and create ozone uh, in some way and then you actually pump out an wow. entire atmosphere this reminds me of hitchhikers where there was one planet whose job was to build other luxury planets if yeah. you remember yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so i mean there is is it that slarty bust fast slarty bust fast okay. correct slarty bust fast <laughs> So there is actually a huge drive to find other habitable planets and uh, colonize them and move people there because we are really screwing up the one that we are on <laughs> right now. So uh, I think yeah, I mean, space exploration is in some ways the future. I mean, yeah. one is one one alternative is we stop this uh, global warming nonsense. Otherwise, we pack up on a spaceship and run as far so as we can. So that we can screw up another planet two thousand years yeah. from now. It's, Fair enough. It actually so this remind this this sort of uh, you know appears to me. how similar planets and fine dining restaurants are <laughs> you're always looking for a new one and if there isn't an atmosphere it's a disaster right? <laughs> oh. yeah, so i think break on that day, yeah, it's break on, on that break. <laughs> sagacious <laughs> note let's take a little break who's ahead in the league and what's cooking off the pitch we at tfg bring all that you need to know about indian football discussions debate banter in depth analysis with a touch of fun and fandom this is the tfg indian football podcast and we're a daily show so check us out on youtube and various other podcasting apps like itunes audio boom soundcloud etc welcome back to part 3 of this episode everybody and before we get started uh, guess what happened uh you finally promised to give up making horrible puns <laughs> you wish usually something that uh, happens on my family whatsapp group ends up on this podcast in a section called profundity of the week yes. now for the first time something that has happened on the podcast has ended up on the whatsapp what <laughs> <laughs> Was uh, it that horrible pun run you made of Giga Factories in the last episode? I suspected that my mildly bad humor was uh, not mildly bad, it was severely bad humor, was mildly irritating. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't that. Any other guesses? Don't tell me. It was the Kiss My Cypress poem we wrote uh, all the way back from episode one. <laughs> Classic, if there ever was one. No, no, Rain, that's not it. Uh, strangely enough, uh, it's about melatonin. Hmm. Uh, remember, we did a short episode on my new glasses with the which had the yellow tint yeah. on them. On that, we explained what melatonin was, which is basically yeah. something that puts you to is a uh, yeah. it's a hormone in the body that yeah. uh, puts yeah. you to sleep, etc., etc., etc. And I got a WhatsApp forward of this. Okay, like what melatonin is, and it's like this magic. Ho- ho- wow. like uh, thing we, have about, arrived, we have arrived we have arrived okay. wow. but 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 guys it is after all a whatsapp forward and mm. if there's one thing we know about whatsapp forward guys you can't curb his natural behavior and tendencies is a little bit, bit like mayavati promising her really uh, like really sincerely that she won't build any more statues of herself the intentions are good to begin with and it's all going well for the first few months but uh, she just goes and cracks at the 6th uh, and month 6 and ends up building another monstrosity or it's like someone trying to stick to their new year resolution of eating healthy sure it's all kale and beetroot juice for the first two weeks but eventually something will snap and by jan 15th there's a giant pizza a tub of chocolate ice cream and a crate of beer and that's just breakfast <laughs> so a whatsapp forward also has such tendencies right? mm. it starts off nicely with good intentions and this particular specimen after resisting nonsense fiction or unesco awards <laughs> for the first two paragraphs <laughs> incredible achievement yeah. he started to slide a bit not by any means of coincidence but in the introduction of the word god mm. of course <laughs> to be fair it was 
person very wrong okay there was nothing factually wrong it's just that there was something weird every day after and i quote every day after sundown this gland produces a substance called melatonin which runs in the blood stream and protects the body from cancer followed by a pee smiley now the fact that it protects you from cancer that's not overly wrong but the fact that it's followed by the pee smiley that bothers me was it to alleviate the tension created by a word called cancer was it to denote the carefree way in which melatonin runs through the blood stream <laughs> like a 6 year old <laughs> <laughs> one can never tell as, as all that aside it seemed good for the first 60% of the forward then came our parents and grandparents who used to sleep early in the night and wake up early in the morning did not suffer from cancer or any of the disease we hear about today ah. whoa, 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 whoa. that's because they died when they were 37 years old <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. so so i am very offended on behalf of obesity smoking and exposure to asbestos over here yeah. <laughs> so all that's okay as long as people get to sleep on time <laughs> ah okay so that's the main thing yeah 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 ah. so anyway t- <laughs> go to sleep on time is the tldr now back to isro in what was not an awkward segue at all in uh, the last couple of sections shri shanoy and shri tadapalli told us about this monumental achievement by the isro and about space exploration i thought we in this section we could look back at the history of this venerable organization we start off shri k strangely enough on your birthday ah yes just a few decades back august 15th 1969 was when the organization kicked off or should mm-hmm. we say it took off ha <laughs> its vision is uh, and i quote to harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration which i must say is automatically better than most companies out there whose visions and missions are random vacuous statements which will eventually have add value to society and shareholders and such nonsense like that there was something called the indian national committee for space research in cospar which was formed in 1962 which then became the ISRO it's a brainchild of uh, Vikram Sarabhai and uh, that dude called Nehru uh-huh. uh there's uh, but th- while this is like the explanation that's probably there on the site what i really like is uh, so these uh, there's a bunch of three ISRO scientists who did a reddit ama ask me anything a few years ago wow. after the mangalyan mission that is so a, cool that is ah, so yeah. cool and we got a lot of good answers in fact we'll visit a few of those mm-hmm. answers because uh, reddit ama is not something to be laughed yeah, yeah, at yeah yeah i mean yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, these guys especially some of the isro scientists i mean they they seem like these very nerdy stuffy, yeah. stuffy professors but they're actually quite badass yeah huh? but they're still they're, nerds they're yeah, badass yeah they're, they're badass way i mean this madhavan nair actually came to one of our office events there is at uh, nv zogilvi nv he actually came there and he actually talked to all of us i mean we are a bunch of advertising professionals we have nothing to do <laughs> like he's all looking down at us like look at you knaves <laughs> type but he still came and he spoke to us and he actually was he actually connected how communications is important on and he yes, actually that's the hallmark of a true leader is how they are able to connect to a bunch of people from another are, from a completely yeah, parallel yeah, universe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway so I really like the answer these guys gave when they were talking about how why is space exploration important the usual uh, the questions like when people are dying on the roads without uh, like famine is happening drought is happening why you want to spend rocket into space and all that so I thought this was really really nice answer ISRO is not taking a bite out of the poor and hungry indians by <clears throat> in fact through its remote sensing and communications programs like IRS and insat we are only helping build an essential infrastructure for the country then there is disaster management we have actually saved millions of of lives and dollars both by being well prepared for cyclone felin hmm. that is when maintaining cutting edge technology uh, technological capability to r&d pace remote sensing helps our farmers and fishermen uh, the beloved uh, poor hungry indians and enables them to buy food giving them food is not the answer and our communication satellites are well apart from connecting the remotest parts of a diverse and large country telemedicine and edusat they are enabling me to answer this question in real time yeah. which i thought was a bad ass kick ass reply. no actually this is true i have heard a lot from my mother so my mother used to work at all india radio uh, so all india radio's mission is not like uh, fm radio stations which yeah, is just yeah. to entertain you and sell you it is reaching out to the it is actually reaching out call. to remote places like they have am radio which actually yeah. people and they have 100% listenership in those areas because there some some of these areas they don't have cable and they mm. don't have and these guys even if they do they'll have it at home they're farmers they're out on the field they carry one transistor along because it's something that's singing along yeah. so these these all things are enabled with insat so i mean that my mother used to keep talking about insat all the time and i was like even an even an employee of all india radio is so much used for satellites you can't really say that okay ha huh, this is just like uh, pie in the sky scientific experiments yeah 
another fact about isro is that they have several subsidiaries like they have research labs construction facilities all across the country like they have i remember when i was in shillong when we were when i was going for the weekend over there we passed uh, on the way we passed this beautiful lake called umiam mm. u m i a m lake is a beautiful lake and it, that place is literally known only for two things umiam lake and there's an isro center right next to it. <laughs> So they have like uh, facilities all across, like they are research labs, construction facilities, uh, and it's and so does its manager, which is the Department of Science, uh, a part of the uh, a part of the Government of India. Uh, one mention here is of course of Sri Hari Kota, where the Satish Dhawan Space Centre is located. Sri Hari Kota was chosen because it's an island; it's a large uninhabited area. It's mathematically ideal, ideally located for launches. So all that Antarctica, whatever, whatever, it's the ideal location for all that trajectory. and stuff to happen yeah i know i was reading about yeah. the in from all of these space centers have to be located very yeah, very strategically yeah. like cape canaveral in florida yeah, yeah. and very a, close to the equator as very well close here, to, here as i want to i want to it seems that this is not the geographical equator this is the magnetic equator oh. so i didn't quite understand what that was but apparently that is what is required and that's why sri hari kota fits the bill and literally there's nothing else over there if you go to sri hari kota looking for tourist attraction or something there's mm-hmm. lit- there, there is a nice lake apparently on the way there from mainland uh, andhra pradesh but there's nothing else there so i on google maps i was like searching is there anything over here that's that's mm-hmm. like it's on the coast <coughs> right so something must be over there i saw one lake over there i zoomed in and i saw sprob lake okay sprob probably means something in telugu i tried looking it up nothing and and it turns out it actually stood for solid propellant space booster plant lake <laughs> <laughs> the water from there feeds the plant <laughs> okay some uh, some facts now uh, the first uh, rocket launched by india was transported on old jeep and a faulty crane followed by of course the world famous uh, bullock cart bullock cart uh, a bullock cart uh, experiment yeah given uh, given the state of indian vehicles at that time i am guessing that might not have been out of choice also <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do you know you can actually order satellite data from mm. ISRO? Wow. wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, this is website called the National Remote Sensing Center, or rather that's a center and it has mm. a website, mm-hmm. and you can actually order high res. data for whatever purpose like uh, for usually for scientific uh, reasons or something but and if your hot neighbor is uh, no, 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 no 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 it, no, no. it yeah. doesn't go that far uh-huh. unfortunately but it's it's a little different i mean I, this is probably a uh, topic for a different episode but uh, in in the us uh, everything that nasa takes uh, captures has to be released for free in public so that's why if you see i, I know this because I, having worked on wikipedia all the spo- oh, space okay. articles all the space articles always had the best of images because all the nasa data is all public domain they cannot keep it because it's made by is by oh, taxpayer okay, money okay. and they have by default put the thing that everything is public domain okay so as far as india is concerned i'm sure there is a slightly different rule yeah and it's it actually it's not that uh, outrageous like they actually have a price list online and the most expensive thing i can see is 10470 for something that's ortho rectified 70 kilometers by 70 kilometers wow whatever that is but <laughs> the fact is you can order that <laughs> late anyway then of course there are some uh, expenditure stats like isro's expenditure in the last uh, 40 years equals nasa's single year budget yeah we know all that Uh, which I'm has sure. more indian engineers nasa or uh, isro <laughs> in fact in fact the funny thing i was reading about same costs chandrayaan was 90 million us dollars mangalyaan to go to mars was 78 million us dollars <laughs> so we are actually getting cheaper it's like we are we are it's Reverse like a, inflation yeah no it's like we are selling pen drives or something <laughs> uk i i had gone to uk once and uh, like we, i wanted to take a uh, tick, like a train ticket to edinburgh and the return ticket was cheaper than the single one <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens all the time in the UK. Yeah. Okay. So, do you know uh, uh, Israel has a commercial wing? It's called Antrix, mm-hmm. and it deals with the commercialization of various space uh, products and stuff like that. It's not a small side business. It actually has a revenue of eighteen billion rupees. Wow. Yeah, with a profit of two billion. That's no. actually more than all your startups right now. Mm-hmm. In fact, right. it's it is by far the most profitable space agency. Uh, I mean, compared to the cost that it spends, mm-hmm. Israel is one of the most profitable, and it it it. basically self sufficient it makes it makes its own money and mm, makes its yeah. own products with yeah, its own yeah. money so it's not even like i mean it does of course get government grants and stuff but it's the research facilities and they are all government employees but it actually is contributes as much as it gets mm. as much as it uses yeah uh, and finally whoever runs a twitter handle has a damn awesome sense of humor if you remember when uh, mangalyan yeah. uh, landed they uh, 
put out a tweet saying howdy at Mars Curiosity keep in touch yeah they were having and, banter yeah. with the Mars yeah, rovers yeah, yeah. good old sunlight is good for your battery <laughs> Hmm. Uh, what is red is a planet and is a focus of my orbit. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and here's something else. Did you know ISRO has its, show, its own version of Google Earth? Wow. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So this it's called Bhuvan. Huh. Uh, so it's a website where you can go and see. Like, uh, there's no app, or you can't see it on your phone, or uh, you can't download it as a exe or something. But you can actually like. Uh, live. Yeah, it's it's pretty much live. But the thing is, it's very laggy. It's not a very uh, user friendly website. But it's the whole Earth. No, it's uh, it's basically India. It's India. It's so India, you have huh? detailed uh, geographical, detailed, uh, uh, physical maps. And the thing maps is, uh, it's not a very. I don't think it's uh, for use commercially because there's a lot of data on like flood data, agricultural data. Uh, ah, weather things like that so, so maybe for yeah. farmers i mean something for farmers, so it's probably developed for other parts of the government and in the ama the reddit mm-hmm. ama they themselves said it's a it's not a very high priority for them and there aren't too many people working on it uh, which is probably why it hasn't been taken to you know um, consumer level i want to end with see there was the, that ama that i was talking about so a lo- lot of interesting questions actually got asked over there and this i really like this question one guy asked why is there no tourism around launches many people would love to pay and watch in person the launch mm-hmm. and the reply was is a very good question there's no question of collecting money uh, just make a pavilion and give official passes and we will try to take the idea forward wow that's a terrific idea in fact that's giving me ton of other ideas all parts of government should have a certain portion of their revenue come from tourism <laughs> imagine the possibilities i'm sure a lot of idiots might pay the ministry of defense some money to rent a tank or just take a nice tour of the of western yeah, rajasthan like, that'll be the next like we- wedding ke liye like I the know. groom comes in a tank <laughs> yeah, i know one guy is like my 4x4 kiya he like my tank le kya hai and the ministry of environment could hold treks ministry of shipping can organize cruises and uh, the parliament itself could raise a shit ton of money by selling the parliament broadcast rights as a tv show that is part reality show part comedy part tragedy and part news they part also, also hawai chappal ad <laughs> <laughs> they also give windows a superb burn in answer to why is the online published coverage photos or webcast for isro mission so bad their reply was there were live videos for all missions shown on dd national the webcast is pathetic as you said i don't know why the resolution is so bad given that dd broadcast in hd also the webcast requires a window media player plug in who uses that sad smiley <laughs> this is an isro scientist saying this on a reddit ama okay so uh, the thing is you have three brilliant engineers from what is possibly the most respected mm. science organization in the country sitting uh, together asking answering your very serious questions on reddit and what do you ask them Where do you get food from while at work? Does Domino's deliver? <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> but they didn't mention in bracket levity. <laughs> Overall, just superb AMA with many sporting moments like this. One person asked, "Are Indian spy satellites covered by the ISRO space budget or under the defence budget?" They just said, "No, <laughs> no idea, idea." With a happy smiley. <laughs> but the best, a- best part of the AMA to my mind was one guy saying. Um, कितना देती है टू विच द आई एस आर ओ गाइज सेट द यंगेस्ट इंजीनियर इन आई एस आर ओ इज वट एवर वट एवर सिक्स पॉइंट फोर लैक्स पर आना विदाउट डिडक्शन एट बैंगलोर एट फोर्टी एट केटर वेन वी गेट दिस एट थर्टी केट दर वेन द डी एवं सेवन पॉइंट टू लैक्स पर आना विदाउट एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा एंड द गाई वेरी शीपिशली वॉज लाइक आई एक्चुअली टॉक अबाउट द स्पीड ऑफ रॉकेट हाउ मच दे गिव दे एक्चुअली टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ मच माई दिस दे गेट टू विच दे सेट हा 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 सो एनी वे टू एंड दिस पॉडकास्ट आई थॉट वीड मेक सम बैड जो Hmm. Uh, or uh, specifically i would make some bad jokes uh, but i know these bad jokes are going to make you cry so it's isro <laughs> Uh, of course yes uh, okay. continue chuck we shall take this as bravely as we can yeah yeah so i looked at some celestial terms actually so if you were to dress up as a planet and go to comic con it would be called cosmo play <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, astro- astronauts as you know can't perform uh, very well when they are in space so they need to take certain drugs so they carry these drugs next to their hips on a special piece of cloth that is called a steroid belt <laughs> Yeah, right. okay. Metallica's drummer uh, his mouth was hurting uh, but whenever his mouth hurt the sun actually would get covered solar's ek lips so, oh, solar's oh, ek lips yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the funniest force mm. of attraction is gravity mm. also uh, levity <laughs> 
<laughs> in French. <laughs> uh, a charged English cricketer is called an ion botham. <laughs> yeah. A uh, person whose grammar is so bad that he uses punctuation just once in 76 years is a, is called Haley's comma. <laughs> <laughs> Well played. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if Narayan and I uh, see a meteor shower, you will see, since you're a vegetarian, a paneer shower. <laughs> shower. <laughs> okay. You guys are like crying into your glasses right now. So that's spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. <laughs> and finally, uh, two points in which the sun crosses the celestial equator in its yearly path in the sky is facilitated by Walter White. I am the one who equinox. equinox. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's. Oh I'm done. man, I'm done. Yeah. On that, <laughs> on that uh, spectacularly horrible note, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is now becoming a regular trope, aren't is it? <laughs> uh, I, I think, enjoyed that. Yeah, I know. I think we had a great episode. I mean, I I'm genuinely uh, this out happy. of this world. Yeah, I know it was. <laughs> And genuinely, I mean, when t- usually talking about Indian governmental agencies, we usually have a lot of doom and gloom <laughs> <laughs> about how corrupt they are or how ineffective or inefficient they are. This is It's a refreshing change. To yeah, I know. Out. I mean, getting the New York Times to bitch <laughs> and wail about your, <laughs> about, <laughs> about your governmental agency feels good. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing, a, they're, I mean, they're getting a lot of practice in their home. I mean, they're they're <laughs> so now uh, I think... On that excellent uh, yeah. note, yes, uh, yes. Signing if off. If you like this podcast and you, if you haven't subscribed to it, find us on all podcasting apps. Pocket Cast highly recommended. Uh, we are on Audio Boom, and yes, we will see you in a fortnight from now. Bye bye. Stay, keep stay looking cool. at the stars. Yeah, stay tuned. Bye. See you soon. If you like listening to this show, then maybe recommend another awesome podcast, especially if you're in the city of Bombay or Mumbai, if you prefer. The podcast hosted by the good folks at The Daily Pow, all about the city of Mumbai. They talk about events, restaurants around the city, or sometimes even just trivia. Also, check out the IVM app with all our shows on both the Apple and Android stores.